Hey guys, it's me, JKD, back at it again with another review. And this one is The Last Case of Benedict Fox. And this was a promising looking platforming game. I love puzzle platformer games. And this one looked the part, but did it deliver? Well, let's have a chat about Benedict Fox, shall we? So what is this game? Well, when you first jump into this game, you are pretty lost in the story. Everything seems pretty weird. So I'll just give you the basics. You are a detective and you have some sort of demon inside of you, which gives you special abilities. And you can enter the minds of dead people. And in their minds is basically a whole platforming world where you can uncover memories so that's the basics of what this game is about and the first good thing that I want to mention in this game is just how immersive it is the visuals and audio are really fantastic for a platformer just listen to the voice acting of the demon that's inside of you only anguish fills this residence Benedict I loved his voice. The visuals were great. It has like a very pretty art style to it and you just feel very immersed into the game. Now, when you're in the mind of a dead person, you'll uncover these teleporters where you can teleport back to your house. And the first thing I noticed was I left the radio on in the house. And then when I made a teleporter appear, you could hear the radio. And yes, that spider scared the absolute shit out of me as someone with arachnophobia. And it's just small details like that that make it very immersive and very cool. Now as for positives for this game, that's probably where the positives kind of stop for me. And now we're probably going to get into the more nitty gritty stuff. So how's the combat in this game? Because combat is a big part of this game. And I thought the combat was passable. I thought it was pretty mediocre. So you've got your average melee button. You've got a block button you've got a dodge button which i rarely use i just use the block button you also have a gun which does a big amount of damage but once you fire that bullet you have to wait until you regenerate another bullet by causing damage to the enemy and then you also unlock demon abilities where for example the first unlock that you can get is to pick up your enemy and throw them up into the air it doesn't do much damage it's more of like a stun so then you can get up to them and do some melee damage for me the combat was all right because there was a little bit of a variety but the problem for me was it didn't feel smooth it felt very indie like and even though it's an indie game you don't want it to feel like an indie game now let's talk about the navigation so as you go through areas it unlocks on your map and I think the map looks very pretty at first glance you think that this map is good it's got the question marks of where you should go and look unfortunately though I spent a lot of my time getting lost because a lot of the question marks you cannot explore yet until later on in the game where you unlock special abilities so there was a big problem of not knowing which question marks I should be going to so it was a real drag to be going to all these question marks that I couldn't explore until eventually I found the correct one <laughs> looking at games that I've loved in the past like Ori and the Blind Forest they would always tell you what direction you should be trying to go in to the main objective and I think that's what this game is missing when it comes to navigation because otherwise you just feel lost without knowing what sort of area should I be looking in. Another solution would be to make the question marks red if we can't explore that area yet and then once we unlock the ability that's necessary for that area then turn it green on the map so then we just know to go that way. Something else I wanted to talk about was loading screens. So whenever you fast travel or teleport you go to a loading screen and I guess that's understandable if you're teleporting like a long way but there was a part where where you go into these mirrors and you're just teleporting around the one room and every time you go into a mirror and teleport you get a loading screen and I felt like that really took me out of the immersion and was kind of annoying speaking of this mirror scene you're trying to drag this lady out of a mirror and you can see when I'm tapping my button really quickly my guy is just glitching all over the place so that was another immersion killer and I think you'll find quite a bit of immersion killers in this game because it does feel very indie like now because this is like a detective game right you play as a detective I was definitely expecting more puzzles and less combat but that's not the case with this game at least in the time that I spent in the game the only puzzles I came across was finding a pattern to unlock something or finding a key to unlock a door that's not even really a puzzle is it and then the rest of my experience was really just combat and exploration so yeah don't expect a ton of puzzles but like I said maybe later on in the game I don't know so we've gone over 
over pretty much all my thoughts on this game that I wanted to share with you guys, give you an idea of whether this game is for you or not. For me personally, it's not for me. It has impressive visuals, immersive audio, but the combat is mediocre, navigation can be confusing, and the frequent loading screens can be frustrating. So for me, this game gets a 5 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know how you thought I did in this review. I'm always trying to improve. If you guys enjoy these reviews, please leave a like. If you want more, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.